acclamation this morning is the incorrect one. It is the Easter acclamation, but you will know the correct acclamation because it's the one we use most of the year. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory the father who with the son and the holy spirit live and reign one god forever and ever Amen. be seated please a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Word of the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be seated, please. Clergy tend to hate to preach on this Sunday. The reason is that we are likely to commit a heresy. Trinity Sunday is like that. There are a few, very few, who relish this day. I suspect they preach profound, deep, insightful, and dry sermons, which go into the weeds of theology on the Trinity. Not me and not today. Before I retired the first time, a priest in the Jackson area took Trinity Sunday as vacation every year. He would invite me to supply. I was the one who had to tread the narrow line between orthodoxy and heresy. That priest later became Bishop of Mississippi. I wonder what he's doing today. The Trinity, of course, is orthodox belief that God exists as one being in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The early church wrestled with this concept mightily. How do you define something so mystical? It's like smoke in your hands. Church councils met, correct beliefs were affirmed, heresies were named, and heretics were excommunicated. The Nicene Creed, which we will say in a few moments, emerged from the fog of controversy. It seemed to resolve the issue, but the conflict continued. The heresies had names. Modalism, monarchianism, one of my favorites, patropassianism, Arianism, and others. They divided the church. The human tendency toward conflict ran rife through the divinely created church. Today, there are efforts to represent the mystical nature of God in metaphors and analogies that theologians find sorely lacking. No doubt, those analogies and metaphors are being preached in pulpits across this country this morning. One is falsely attributed to St. Patrick of Ireland. He is reputed to have picked up a clover and described it as an image of the Trinity. One clover with three leaves. Yet theologians point out that this minimizes the unity of the Trinity. Another popular image is water, which can exist as steam, liquid, or ice. 
but it is pointed out that the Trinity cannot be defined in such separate and distinct forms. There's also the analogy of a father or a mother. A father, for example, is seen as son, husband, and father. Likewise, a mother is seen as daughter, wife, and mother. But theologians say the Trinity is always consistent in its being and is not subject to stages of existence. So what are we to do? Jesus speaks to us today in today's Gospel reading. His words should give us both a sense of humility and patience. Jesus said to the disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. <coughs> Jesus is telling us that the revelation is not complete. When will it be complete? When will we understand fully? When, we, when will we no longer see through a glass darkly? Maybe some do already, but not everyone. Be patient. Paul tells us that we are to rely on something else. <coughs> something which goes beyond the Gnosticism the secret knowledge of the early church. Faith. Hear his words. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. His words came several years after Jesus when things were still in a state of flux. But his letter to the Romans is one of the masterpieces of sacred writing. His words echo Jesus's, who says, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, not secret knowledge, a profound theological understanding. But faith. Our job, therefore, is to embrace the faith that we have been given and to stand in silence and all before the divine ministry, <clears throat> mystery, which we call the Holy Trinity. Amen. <laughs> Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. Life for life, true God for true God, the God not made, from one to the Father, to live in all things for me, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was taken in, for our sake he was crucified and unconscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the words of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and 
the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, we pray to the Father through the Son in the Holy Spirit, saying, Blessed Trinity, one God, how exalted is your name in all the world. Holy and mysterious one, you have given to your church peace with the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, and through Christ we have been justified by faith and obtained access to the grace in which we stand. Guide your church into all truth through the Spirit of truth that we may faithfully praise you and serve you always. Blessed Trinity, one God, how exalted is your name in all the world. Your majesty is praised from the mouths of infants and children. Let the leaders of our nation and all in authority throughout the world follow your wisdom, know your peace, and create communities of compassion and love. Blessed Trinity, one God, in your spirit you reach everywhere to bless all humanity created in your divine image made but a little lower than the angels yet adorned with glory and honor send forth your wisdom to direct the human race that all may listen to her voice and live in the fullness of life as you intend blessed trinity one god how exalted is your name in all the world you have led us into a good community where neighbors attend to one another with mutual care and accountability. Let us hear the call of wisdom and understanding that we may live creatively and increase the measure of truth, beauty, and goodness that can be shared among all people. Blessed Trinity, one God. How exalted is your name in all the world. Your divine wisdom rejoices in this inhabited world and delights in the human race. Let our suffering produce endurance, and endurance produce character, and character produce hope which does not disappoint us. Hear our prayers for those for whom we intercede. We pray especially for John, Bo, Todd, Ed, Randy, Lissa, the family of Leela Martin, Rhea and Larry, Robbie and Kim, Jerry and Mary Jo, Randy and Vaughn, Bill and Betsy, and all those in need of prayer during this pandemic. We also pray for those on our long-term prayer list, Margaret, John, Donna, Kristen, Chuck, Martha, Adrian, Ward, and Gladys, Will, Kermit, Ivan, Dean, Ryder, Donald, Janet, Jean, Tom, Doug, the Jim Hines family, Jean, Vicki, Pat, Russell, Doug, Denson, Lil, Brian Phillips and family, Myra, Francis, Rem, Shirley, and Kristen. Are there others? We pray for all first responders and all in the armed forces and for their families. Joe, Tim, Christopher, Brewer, Lewis, Patrick, Brandon, Ashlyn, Sarah Grace, Bernie, John, Cody, Hunter, Joey, Derek, Austin, and all in harm's way. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our fellow parish of Trinity in Mobile. We pray that you weave our diocesan capital campaign into your kingdom and consecrate to your glory that which is given. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of South America. We pray for all people affected by natural disasters and war. Accept our gratefulness for your goodness and blessing toward us, especially for the wedding anniversary of Jean and Rod and the birthdays of Jerry, Ross, and Monica. Receive into your eternal life those who have died. Blessed Trinity, one God. How exalted is your name in all the world. Your love, O Father, has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us Christ our Savior. Let divine wisdom and grace fill all of creation. We may live in you and you may live in us. 
the praise and glory of the Holy Trinity, one God, living in truth, goodness, and beauty, wherever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. First peace, Bill. First peace, Bill. First peace, First peace, Be seated, please. I'm going to have to pull out the Cheech and Chong thing again. <laughs> Good morning. We're glad to have all of you here at the 1030 worship service at St. Paul's Chapel. Uh, I want to say a special word of welcome to visitors who are here. There is a visitor's card found in the pew rack, and we'd, we would ask that you complete that and uh, either put it in the alms basin when the alms basin comes around or give it to an usher following the service. And I would remind you that all baptized persons, regardless of denomination, are invited and encouraged to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion at this altar. I call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin, uh, making special note about the EMI dedication coming up in July which is one of the focal points of our ministry. And also uh, a scholarship program that is from one of our own, Daisy Moore, for five minority students who are going to major in education. There's an announcement about that in the bulletin as well. And there's another announcement that's not in the bulletin, and that is that you should have received the electronic version of the parish directory on Friday. We would ask that you check that for correctness, make sure everything's right in it, uh, that there's an email address if you have an email address, and if the email address in there is incorrect, that you correct that. And please let us know if there are problems. Anything else on that, Jan? Um, if some, anybody didn't get it, let me know so we can have your email address and send it. But there are also some printouts in the office, and we can make more as needed. So okay. if you'd like to print out, we'll do like Doritos. We'll make more. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Senior Warden Ronnie Miller has a few words. Morning. 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 I'm sure you received in the mail the news that we consider horrible news, but I know for some people it's a blessing to be able to do what they'll be doing in the future. Particularly this man who is now leading us, and that is David Johnson. Uh, he has decided, if you agree, uh, to go to a time of supply priest, meaning he will be here only on Sundays. But out of his goodness of his heart, he has given us eight more weeks to find hopefully someone else to take our place as, his place as rector. And also that the search committee may find more candidates to look at and hopefully get before he leaves. That would be the idea. Uh, when I was in, uh, 70 years old and retired uh, from teaching in college after 40 something years, and an offer came up to me about. Uh, Taking another job that my wife said I always wanted. And so I did that for three years. Let me tell you, if I had that to do over again, I would never do that. <laughs> retire and retire. Well, David, as you know now, is blessing us again to stay with us. And he's the kind of man that has a lot of integrity. And I guess everybody here knows who has created such a good 
congregation. More people are coming than ever before, not just the pandemic caused that. I think primarily it's David and what he's done in this church. He has gone through the files and done some work on things that should have been done prior to his arrival that were not done, spent a lot of time and effort. I think, if nothing else, we need to stand up and give him a round of applause. Good words. And I want you to know, Nora and I love this congregation. And I'm going to be like the bad penny. I'm going to keep coming back. And uh, as you heard Ronnie say, uh, I'll be the supply priest at the Vestry's uh, invitation for the end of July. But after that, after a decent interval of allowing uh, you know time to pass, Nora and I nor my wife and I will uh, make this congregation our home, except I will be sitting in the pew like you are. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, that's, it's just time. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
praise to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and had their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope. To proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, 
through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover sacrifice for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith in Christ's gift.
Thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Set us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.